Hello, this is CJ Hoyle. Today is Sunday, March 8th, 2020, and I'm standing here at the Whitby GO Station. Today I'm riding my 1992 Iowa linear recumbent bike, which has an action camera mounted on the front of it. And in this video, I'm going to be giving a narrated tour of Whitby, riding from here at the Whitby GO Station up to Cullen Central Park. So the Whitby GO Station is situated down near the south end of Whitby, and it's right next to Highway 401, which is what I'm crossing right here on this bridge. The road that I'm riding on right now is called Henry Street, and I'll be on this road until I get to Dundas Street, or Highway 2 here in Whitby. You'll notice that this road here has a, a nice wide paved shoulder on it, which is great for cycling. I hesitate to call it a bike lane because I believe technically it's not actually a bike lane because it doesn't have any actual bike lane symbol or any kind of no parking sign. So periodically you will find cars that are parked here and I believe it is actually legal for them to do that. So again, not technically a bike lane, but it does still make riding on this stretch of roadway a little bit more comfortable for a cyclist. The road we're about to cross here is called Burns Street. I should mention the road that we're riding on Henry Street, we're riding north along it, so this is an east-west street that we're crossing. Henry Street was improved a few years ago. This used to be an old, old-style Whitby Road which had ditches on either side and a little, you know, a little gravel area and then a ditch but they put in a proper sewer system here for the storm sewer and you know put in curbs and and widen the road I suppose. That was done a few years ago. Over on our left we're going past Henry Street High School which was built in 1954. For a long time or for a while at least it was the only high school in Whitby and it actually before it was known as Henry Street High School, it was called Whitby District High School. In the 1960s, they built a, a second high school, and that one is over on Anderson Road. So when they did that, they renamed the, the first high school. So you have Henry Street and Anderson high schools. A number of years ago I did film a video showing this road. Uh, this was back, I think it was the summer of 2015, but it was a revisit to a commute that I used to do when I used to live in Whitby and I was a co-op student and I rode south along this road. But back in those days, that was before they had widened the road and, and built it out like this, so it wasn't nearly as comfortable for riding on as it is now. We're just crossing Dunlop Street now. And coming up on our right is the main branch of the Whitby Public Library, which is a relatively new building, or at least in my lifetime it's relatively new. I remember when there was a, an older building that was set on, set on that same site there. That was the library that I remember as a kid until they replaced it. An interesting aspect of that construction project was they left the original library building in place throughout the construction of the new one and they built the new one primarily on the parking lot area of the existing library and once the new library was finished or nearly finished they demolished the old one and the footprint from the old one was uh, turned into a 
sort of a central square, which is in front. So that traffic light that we went through back there, that was Highway 2, or Dundas Street, here in Whitby. And after I crossed the road, Henry Street changed his names and becomes Euclid Street. But I have to jog over one street to get to where I need to go. So that was Mary Street I'm on, and I'm now on Palace Street, continuing my way north. I suppose I could have stayed on Euclid all the way to the end here, but the particular route of streets that I prefer to take through this part of Whitby includes this one here. So we're just crossing John Street now. So this area that we're riding through is sort of the old, more original part of the town of Whitby, essentially downtown Whitby. A lot of these houses are, you know, they go back to the same sort of period that the high school was built in the, in the 50s or maybe even earlier. So downtown Whitby is built like a very sort of traditional grid. All the roads meet at 90 degrees and they're, you know, sort of a uniform distance apart for each block. Over on the left, we're going past the schoolyard. That's for a school called E.A. Fairman Public School. So downtown Whitby, as I said, is sort of built in this grid of, you know, streets that are sort of meeting each other at 90 degrees and they're very close to the central sort of business district of the old town of Whitby, the, the downtown Brock Street, where Brock and Dundas, the other main street where those two roads meet. Earlier this year, I did give a tour. Actually, I guess it was back in December. I gave a tour of downtown Whitby riding along Brock Street. So I just turned left onto this little road here and I'm gonna make another right onto Hillcrest Drive. The reason I like to go this way, this is Maple Street that I'm on right now. The reason I like to turn onto Maple Street is because there's a bit of a hill to climb here. And by doing it this way, you sort of break that hill up into two sections. So the first part of the hill was back there. Then I'm gonna make another left here and continue my way up the rest of this hill. This is Beach Street that I'm now turning left onto. And yeah, here's the rest of that hill that I have to do. And essentially, the reason I have to sort of jog my way over the, in the west direction here is because not very many streets continue uh, north through this area. There's some train tracks that we need to get across, and because of those train tracks, there's a limited number of crossings. So we're gonna be crossing those train tracks along a street called Cochran Street. One of the reasons I decided to show this particular route is because this, you can actually see some signs that they just recently put up, probably too hard to see, but there's one here with an arrow pointing left, right below that no exit sign. And that's leading you towards the Greenbelt route for cycling, which is a, a long distance road cycling route of country roads through the Greenbelt. Gonna be turning right here onto Cochran Street. So the green belt itself does not, or the green belt route itself does not pass through the community of Whitby, but it does pass through the farmland which is north of Whitby. And as such, they have signage to get you from the GO station up to that green belt route. And the roads that I'm showing here today are part of that connection. So as you can see, Cochran has a bike lane on it. This is also a relatively new addition to Cochrane. I think, you know, maybe one or two years ago they added this in. And we have to climb a little bit of a hill here because we're riding across those train tracks that I mentioned earlier. And 
when I say these bike lanes are a relatively new addition, I'm specifically talking about this segment of Cochrane, north of the next major interchange, which is called Rossland. Those bike lanes have been there for about 10 years or so. But these ones here are relatively new. To me, this always seemed like sort of a no-brainer to add bike lanes because for as long as I can remember, this is just a, a two-way road or, you know, a, a two, two-lane road, one, one lane in each direction, but the lanes were enormously wide and there was ample space to paint on these bike lanes or pseudo-bike lanes, like I said before. No bike symbols in them and no, no parking signs, so people are technically... I believe allowed to park here if they if they wanted to, which does compromise the the safety of them for a cyclist because you got your nice lane here and then all of a sudden if there's a parked car that you have to get around, well then you've gotta you know change lanes into the much busier roadway, which not all cyclists are entirely comfortable doing. So we're just about at Rosslyn Road. So this is a route that I've taken very many times, I'd say probably hundreds of times. And the reason is because I live in Toronto and I have family that lives here in Whitby and the house where I grew up is very close to where I'm riding right now. In fact, my high school, if we were to turn left at Rosslyn Road, within about 500 meters or so, you'd be at my high school where I went to for grade 10 until grade 12, Donald A. Wilson Secondary School. So I frequently take the GO train to get to Whitby and then I ride my bike from the GO station to the house where I grew up, where my parents still live. And before I before I uh, lived in Toronto and came to visit here, I would sort of do the, the ride in the opposite direction. When I wanted to go to Toronto, I would ride from the house to the, the GO station to get to, to get to take the train downtown. So as I mentioned, these bike lanes have been here for maybe a little bit less than 10 years, but around, around that ballpark number, about 10 years. And they were sort of the first in the first wave of bike infrastructure that came to Whitby. So we're just got a stop sign here. This is called Lockridge Street that we're going, going across, but we're gonna continue our way north to get up to Cullen Central Park, which is, if you grew up around Ontario, well, at least in your, around my age, you might, or even older, you very possibly might remember a place called Cullen Gardens, which is a sort of a, a children's park, or a, I don't really know how to describe it. Like, that wasn't really an amusement park because there wasn't really rides, or not, not really any significant rides, but it was best known for having a miniature village. These little, tiny little, model houses with little people and certainly a place that I have fond memories coming to as a child. This bridge we're just crossing is over the Lind Creek, which is one of the creeks that runs through Whitby. So yeah, Cullen, Cullen Gardens was a privately owned sort of call it amusement park. And uh, throughout you know, the time that I, I grew up in Whitby, the land here in Whitby was gradually being bought up and developed into houses. And that included a lot of the property. Well, I mean, it was sort of encro encroaching on this, this park. And uh, the town ended up buying the, 
the property before it could get sold and turned into houses. So it's now a, a public park. Of course, it doesn't have the same level of sort of amenities that it did back when it was a, you know, privately owned park. It's really just like a regular park, but it has that, that heritage and that history that goes along with it. So today the weather is quite warm, at least compared to what it's been recently. I haven't looked at the thermometer this morning, but I'm gonna guess it's around five or six degrees Celsius and very sunny, nice blue sky, beautiful day to be out and about. One of the reasons why I'm here in Whitby today is because today is my 31st birthday. So I'm gonna celebrate my birthday with some family here. And I'm glad to be riding my recumbent bike today. For more than a month, up until yesterday, I've been, when I'd be taking bike rides, it would always be on my green machine winter bike. And that's because I'm very protected, protective of my pristine recumbent bikes. And I really don't like getting road salt on them, but we've had some warmer weather recently and some rain and the roads are dry and practically no salt on the roads anymore so I felt it was about time that I could ride my recumbent bike again and it certainly is very comfortable and I I missed it so the traffic light that we're approaching up the head is called well, for, it's for a road that's called Taunton Road, which is a major east-west road here sort of at the north end of Whitby. In terms of postal addresses, Taunton Road is the divider between Whitby and Brooklyn, although this is all part of the town of Whitby in terms of politics. So yeah, here's Taunton Road, and just beyond here is where Cullen Gardens was, and Cullen Central Park is. It's now very much a construction site. Large portions of this property are being redeveloped, but still a portion of it is being maintained as a park. So we'll just wait for this traffic light, and then we'll get across. You can see that blue sign up that says Cullen Central Park. But that sign again once would have said Cullen Gardens. Now I wonder if this traffic light is going to change just for me <laughs> because I didn't press any buttons and I'm not sure anyone else is waiting around. The traffic lights around here are, are triggered based on activity. So I'm going to ride over here and I will press the traffic light button here for a pedestrian because I don't think the sensors that are in the road will pick up my bike. But yeah, so just sort of on that signpost where it shows the five tons per axle, right above that there's a sign advertising for the green belt route. So if you wanted to get up to the green belt, which I'm not going to be riding to today, there's a path which goes through this Cullen Central Park, which goes up to a conservation area called Heber Downs. And from there you get onto a road which will take you to that green belt route, which you can then ride for, you know, long distances on uh, quiet country roads. So I'll kind of show you how you get there, but we're essentially at the end of what we're gonna be showing in this video. The development that you can see over on the right, that construction site is the original part of Cullen Gardens, which was a banquet hall. That's being redeveloped into, I believe, a spa. Okay, actually, I don't really want to ride on this muddy, 
muddy road here because my bike is very clean right now. But essentially, if you continued along that way, eventually I'm sure it'll be paved. That would lead you to the trail, which is a paved trail going through the woods, which will eventually take you up to the green belt route up in the northern country roadways of Whitby. Well anyway, I hope you enjoyed joining me on this short tour through Whitby. If you watched all the way to the end of the video, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below, and thanks for watching.